tonight I got you down here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna empty <laughs> empty the transmission of the old transmission fluid, whatever's left. There's this there's this little uh, drain bolt here. Ooh, had some water in it too. All right, well, we'll get rid of all that. Yeah, because I went ahead and got a gallon so I can just refill it. We'll let that drain out here. Make sure that's clean. And then we'll go to put it back in. Hmm. I think it had a little grease in it too. Something is in it. Not sure what that is, but anyways, as you can see, there's quite a bit in there. So We'll bring you up here while that's draining. That should be good. set you up on a different tripod here so anyways when you're filling up your transmission uh, your manual transmission you're gonna need this little attachment for um, it's actually cheaper if you buy a gallon because three quarts was gonna be like 12 bucks and I got the gallon for like 13 so I, I mean after you because it's like I forget how much it is a quart so anyways I just know that I figured it up and I saved a couple of bucks by getting the gallon so anyways but keep you a couple of small quart bottles around so that you can use your little attachment a little better and a little easier but uh but there it is. Uh, I forget how much this thing was. I think it was like nine bucks or something. But I've used it twice since I've had it because I used it on the old transmission whenever I had to fill it up. So, anyways, I am only hoping that that transmission is as good as he says it is. Um, I did find a little fragment of something in there whenever I was cleaning that off, but hopefully it wasn't anything major but hey you never know I mean with any hopes this thing will get me to where I can get a job and get work in a little while and save up and get another vehicle and then uh, I'll worry about this thing as like a backup or a spare and stuff like that but anyways uh, your little uh uh, your little uh, oil pump. I got mine in AutoZone. Um, in case anybody's wondering. So, uh, anyways, we go with the giant gallon here. Like I say, uh, whenever I did the math in my head, this was actually uh, about three dollars cheaper to do it this way instead of buying four quarts 
So you want to look at that kind of stuff whenever you're going and getting things like that too, because you know I notice it's the same way with like a, a gallon of oil. Um, you know, a gallon of oil is actually cheaper than buying individual quarts for the amount you need. So, uh, anyways, but I do have a quart of oil, so uh, as soon as I get me an oil filter, I can get that put back in. Although, my oil is fine. It's just I had to take my oil filter off to do some stuff last night. So, anyways... That's filling up a transmission. Uh, that's how you do it. That's what you do. Uh, and then after you're done, you replace the seal again. Make sure it's clean. Find the hole. Ta-da! And that's all you gotta do there. And it should be full. New fluid. So we're good on that. So anyways, like I say, I, I think it actually called for three and a half quarts instead of four and a half quarts, which I thought it was four and a half quarts. Guess I was wrong. Because it started seeping out, running out, not just seeping out a little, but it was running out. So. <coughs> okay. I finally got all the bolts back in the transmission. I got, I'm getting ready to put the uh, starter on next. So I'm gonna get the starter. And the starter is kind of a pain in the butt to get to. So. Cylinder goes right here. Obviously, there's your hydraulic line. And these are 12 millimeter bolts. Put this in here, like so.
I think even that clutch fork is better than the old one I had, but then again, that whole transmission was pretty much shot. Uh, so, anyways, then we'll throw this in here. And you should definitely have a line wrench. A line wrench looks like this. It has a little cutout in it. And it's usually, on the inside, it's usually five, well, six. My fault. Usually on the inside, it's six. So make sure you got a decent line wrench uh, for what you're needing it for. Uh, this is actually a 10 and a 12. It's a combo 10 and 12. Uh, the reason you want to use a line wrench is because actually if you use just like a basic wrench like just a open end then a lot of times you will end up uh, stripping it out because you're not getting enough grip on it with just two sides so at least if you've got all your sides covered you can get a little bit more oomph into it. So there's the slave cylinder done. Okay, guys and gals, so far so good. I got the starter back on, got the slave cylinder back on. I got the uh, uh, clutch line all back connected. Um, I got the transmission fluid changed. Completely. I got the old stuff emptied out, which had a little condensation or water or something in it, so it needed to go anyways. Um, uh, so the next thing is, is I'm kind of waiting for the oil filter. Um, maybe with any luck, we might have this thing set back down on the ground tonight. I'm not positive, but we might be pretty close tonight, and then maybe ready to start it up tomorrow um, and, but we're you know I still got the battery tray and the battery and I got the intake I got the PCV to all put back in um, which eventually I'm gonna get a catch can of some kind but I have I, I have it kind of rigged up with a uh, with a little, uh, uh, like a, a little bottle for now, but that's fine. Whatever works, at least it catches anything that may need to be caught <clears throat> and it's not going into the atmosphere. Uh, the reason I am not doing it the manufactured way is because I'm having trouble with the PCV valves. Apparently they're all junk. Uh, they'll last like a month or so and then they start squealing on me um, so you, You're paying three bucks or four bucks, whatever they are every couple of months It, it kind of sucks and it gets expensive. So I just kind of decided to go around that uh, So instead of actually having the PCV valve, I went ahead and I blocked that off and I've got it just being going to my homemade catch can for now so anyways um, I'll get to doing some more stuff I need to get the oil filter put on when it gets here and I'll have that to do and then it'll be the the header will have to go on before I put the cross member across there I can go ahead and put this one on 
because I think this one goes on first anyways, the one goes across for the motor mount. Um, I think it goes on first. I'm not positive. I have to try to remember which one goes on first. Uh, maybe the cross member goes on first and then the, this one comes off. This one goes on after. I think the actual, I think I have to wait on the header because I actually need the space down there so I'm not going to put the cross member on just yet. I'm not even going to worry about the header just yet. But I do know the header has to go on first before you put the cross members on. So anyways, I'll, I'll get to that here shortly. So stay tuned. We'll go ahead and put the uh, fuse box back on here while I'm at it, which is pretty simple. It's two little 10 millimeter bolts. And you'll find out when you're working on cars, it helps to be a little bit ambidextrous. It helps to be able to use both of your hands, uh, you know, relatively equally. So, uh, anyways, that's back on. Wow, we're getting there. It's starting to look like an engine bay again. You know, everything's looking like it's going together pretty good. <sighs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> 